What is up, my soft storm righteous strike? You discharging you know episode this week in WWE. Joined, as always, by your boy Conscious. Hello, viewers. So this week, uh it's honestly a bigger letdown than the past weeks, just because of um Raw twenty five. We'll get into that. Um but there is definitely a a good amount of news um we want to cover because a lot of important things have been happening within the past 72 hours um so first off um this is technically a two-bit story the first uh news story is technically two-parter so about oh shit someone's in my door um i'm got it basically is about 48 to 72 hours um ago um actually well, because I'm recording this on Thursday, so it'd be maybe Saturday. So last weekend, essentially, um, Enzo Mori was announced. He was suspended indefinitely um, due to sexual assault allegations and um, rape allegations. And I, I say allegations because at the time, no one knew what was going on. Um, supposedly, the story was this case happened in October, like September, October. And WB did not even know about it. So, major repercussions. And as, uh, allegedly, Enzo um, drug and raped a woman. Um, yeah, it's it's not, not good for him and or the WB in general. And it, it, it's just stuff like this is disgusting to me. Um, and then following Monday um, for, on Raw 25, like maybe that morning... Enzo was announced, uh, or it was announced that Enzo has been terminated from the company, um, as they do not condone his actions, and it, it's just inexplicable. Um, it, I do not agree with what he did in the slightest, and I sincerely hope he never finds work uh, ever again. It just, it's disgusting. Um, and now that leaves the question with the um cruiserweight championship because it's now vacated but me and conscious will be going over that more once we cover 205 live because this week was actually kind of important for 205 live um yep. and also next week will be important as well for 205 um yep. so that's the whole story on enzo um oh did you talk about the did yeah, you talk about the, the new whole, gm yeah the GM whole suspension and, and uh firing no, um, talk about the GM. No, no, I, I, I was, I was, I wasn't talking about that yet. I was saying, that I was hinting at two hundred five live that that's why it was important this week. Ah, so you went to the GM. Oh yeah, no, trust talking. me, I have my prediction of who the GM is, and you, you probably yeah. agree with me on who it is. Um, you'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, so the next biz story we got is um, XFL is making a comeback. We've been talking about this for um, the past couple of uh, weeks that Vinny Mac has been selling the shares and all that, trying to support um, the XFL. And I think it's his other um, media company. It's like Alpha something. I don't know. Um, the amount of fucks I get about the XFL is... Oh, I know. Of- but essentially, it's going to make a comeback in 2020, and now they're making a big emphasis on they're going to be on listening to the fans, to medical staff, whatever. Um, oh, essentially throwing shit at NFL. What? I, I will say this: XFL, the Vince timing on XFL is actually very intelligent from him because he's doing it right. He has his season right when the NFL goes off goes their off season, and as NFL fans, they itch for more shit. And a bigger, bigger thing about this is um. The fact he's announcing this under so many uh, controversies with NFL right now, he he's actually really smart about doing mm-hmm. this. So a lot of people, a lot of people are tired of the NFL because it's like, oh, for example, the fucking um the Patriots Super Bowl again, lol. No yo, one yo, we cares. got Patriots versus Philadelphia Eagles. Yo, yep. I vote to curse not the whole room. People were excited for the Eagles, but people were like, the Patriots going to Super Bowl again. Woo. No one fucking cares. They don't. Literally, well, 
the the Super Bowl I really want to see, um, which I'm I by I'm no means a fan of either of the teams I'm about to list, but people were go, are probably gonna agree with me on this that Jaguars versus Vikings would have been so much of a better Super Bowl. Oh no, I agree. I I totally honestly agree. Because th- those two have not seen a Super Bowl in decades. Yep. Like it, but just to think about a whole underdog story with that, fantastic. Well, the uh, thing is, I'm not even, I'm not even too mad about the Vikings making Super Bowl. I, I actually am happy about the Vikings. It's literally the Patriots. I'm yeah, tired of seeing the Patriots in the Super Bowl. I I want to see Jaguars beat them so much, and they were close, but I I still think the referees are bought out. But that's Yo. conspiracies. Um, so moving on to actual wrestling again, um, we got, oh yeah, but side note for XFL, there, Vinny, uh, cited that there is going to be no appearances, um, from WWE personnel, um, which was a big just... thing in XFL because it was kind of almost to the point of almost a detriment to either yep. XFL or WWE, but luckily now that won't be the case. Um, so, Vince McMahon was smart this time around. Keep exactly. the two entities separate. He, he learned from his biggest failure of all time. Um, yep. Next we got Rich Swan is officially cleared of all charges of um, misconduct, um, alleged like forged is like alleged kidnapping. It, it the whole incident that involved him and his wife. Um, Charges are now cleared through. He's he's not um, going to be charged with anything. Uh, WB has yet to make a comment on this. So figure we might see Rich Swan back in a couple of weeks. It won't be immediately. It'll be like yeah, I do see the Rich. I do see Rich Swan coming back because that straight up WB needs him. Yeah, and they 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 need him. Then they no no want they need him. Yeah, they. Fuck themselves. You want hard. To, we 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 get ricochets and don't we don't you worry. Um Ricochet Ricochet's okay, but as of right now, you don't have any established talent, my dude. Oh I know. Um You have I guess you have Cedric, which is cool and everything, but yo, no. Cedric's actually really good though. Like he's mad talented. No, I lo- I I am a big fan of Cedric. But the thing is You can't lean on him, one person. Yep, and they they're building him like they built Daniel Bryan. The underdog who keeps fighting but comes short every time, and they need to keep building Cedric that way. That's the best way they should build Cedric. If he wins the cruiserweight champ, they like let's just say he gets snuffed out of the championship at Royal Rumble for for some reason. Let let let's make this a Daniel Bryan story. He gets snuffed out because of the um, upcoming general manager saying, "You know what? Screw you," because it happens to be a heel. Um. Uh. Now Cedric Alexander has to get another shot, but this time it's going to be at Mania, so that way he can get a Mania Championship victory, which is literally the same kind of story Daniel Bryan had, except for like the whole Royal Rumble BS, but and the fans rioting, but yeah, and that that's at least how I can see if if they don't give him the championship at Rumble, it's going to be at WrestleMania, hands yeah. down. Um. So next bit of news um, related to the Royal Rumble is Ronda Rousey supposedly saying um, to a TMZ reporter that she will not be at the Royal Rumble because she'll be in Columbia filming a new movie um, with, I believe it has like Mark Wahlberg in there or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, yeah. I didn't read too big into it because I, I really don't care. Um, but I honestly think she's lying through her teeth and she'll make a appearance at the Rumble. But... Because it, it's not the hard out hop in a plane. Because if you remember last WrestleMania, the Hardys said this, a similar thing. Where they, oh, we're, we're too busy doing wrestling gigs with ROH and all that. We're, we're not going to make WrestleMania. And they made it at WrestleMania. And um, they did ROH. Actually, they did ROH and the, and was it Mania? In back-to-back nights? Yes. Literally back-to-back. Which they, this, they did the smartest thing possible, not signing an official contract. With ROH, they just, they were on temporary contracts and stuff like that. Yeah, well, it, it was literally just the whole conquest of gold. Yep. Which was fantastic and the storyline perspective. Um, but moving onwards, we got uh, Steph McMahon. Uh, 
special commentator for the women's uh, Rumble match. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I no. I, I don't really care about um, the, this announcement. Because I'm going to get tired of hearing Stephanie McMahon within the first five seconds. Why? Why, though? That's my question. Why, though? Your question on why I'm going to get annoyed with Stephanie McMahon or why is she no, commentating? Why, why is Stephanie? You have all these other women. Because who... all the other women are competing. Beth Phoenix, all these yes. women legends you have at your disposal. Think about it. All if these Beth Phoenix women. is not commentating, she's participating. If I, Kelly I, I, Kelly okay. isn't commentating, she's participating. You did not have to do them. You can do the pregnant with you have Maria Canales. Pregnant. She can't be in it. Um, Mar- I don't even know if they're still in WWE. No, they are in WWE. Maria Canales. Maria Canales and Mike Bennett are still both in WWE. Oh, he yeah. Has, Is he still getting help, though? Yeah. He's doing a lot better than he was. And he's he's been he hasn't really been in a prominent role on WWE TV in a while. But yeah, he's getting a lot more help. But you know, as, as long as, as long as he's getting better, like at his yeah. health, that that's really what's important. Um, but I, yeah. I know I don't watch. It's really just that Ronda Rousey actually won't be in the Rumble. She's gonna be commentating, and she's just gonna like toss Stephanie McMahon through a table, and she commentates. Oh, I can potentially see her coming out and be like going to the thing. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm not participating. And then all of a sudden, her, um, some... it's going to be it's gonna be the same thing that happened with the face uh, with Daniel. With that Daniel, um, AJ, where we're like, we well, hear some random music. Like, oh, what the fuck is that music? Oh, Yo, but shit. like as soon as I heard, heard the music, I'm like, yo, I've never heard this music before, but it's kind of lit. And then as soon as uh-huh. I, I see AJ walk in, like my jaw immediately dropped. Where I'm like, is, is this actually real life? That's the only I'm time because they're, they're like it's just because I I didn't know the music either. I was like, what the hell? Whose music is this? The music is flames. They're, as they they point to Kevin Roman, like why are they pointing at Roman? And they look up AJ Styles. Yo, oh I, my god! I, I still think that's the only time I've ever been legitimately surprised by like to the point of like I didn't have words. Like with the Hardy surprise. I, I thought it was so great, but it it has nothing on su- AJ Styles' surprise debut at Royal Rumble. Like it's a straight up debut. It isn't a return. It's it just fantastic, and I, I have a uh, feeling that EC3 or Ricochet is probably going to make a debut at Rumble as well. Uh, EC3 for sure. Ricochet double because Ricochet. Needs to go through developmental because he doesn't really know a lot about camera work yet. He needs to work on his camera. Yeah, that, work. that's that's fair though. Like, he's probably not gonna be in developmental too long. No, no, no. He just he needs to he needs to tweak his style a little bit, and in camera work and ricochet it should be set to move up. Yeah, and then EC3, I'm, he's worked in TNA, and their camera style isn't too differently. Yep. And he he has the mic skills and all that. Yeah, I could potentially see him coming. As up long as he's day. introduced by Dixie, if he's introduced by Dixie, it'll be so much better. Uh, okay, because so he, is he, that he has the trade. He trademarked his name, so he ha- owns the oh. rights to his name. So he can go still as EC3 and have Dixie Carter be his manager. The thing is, the thing is, he copyrighted EC3 by Ethan Carter the third. He's copyrighted the name EC3, which is smart. Yeah, so he could still go by the name EC3, and the commentary just refers to him as EC3. If they really have to say his real name, technically TNA still doesn't own the name. Carter. They they can't own the name Carter. Okay, is that all the news or is there Um, more? Oh, two more pieces, actually. Um, We keep getting sidetracked. This is just our thing at this point. Um, So, Lita not being invited to Raw 25... And that was just disgusting. <laughs> that I even, have no words even for that. Randy, the guy that invited to Raw 25, was, was really surprising too. Who was invited? Randy. Brandy. Randy Orton. Oh, Randy. Okay, yeah. But but no one wants to see Orton anymore. <laughs> but the thing is, they had a perfect opportunity to introduce him and his dad. Yeah. 
Cowboy Bob Orton is a legend. I know. I it I I never I I'm not saying that you're not that that you're wrong. And even his wife took to Twitter and she's like, "Yeah, this is a problem." But at the same time, like if he was home with his kids, I I I'd say that's the better of the two options considering he's always on the road. And he's been on the road for like 15, 20 years. Wouldn't really kill him to see his... No, I'm sorry, not 15, 20 years. It's more like 15 years, but still, my point. Um, Moving onwards, though. Um, The last piece of news, which is actually the most important one in my... One of the most important ones that we covered today, is the certain rumors circulating around Daniel Bryan and his possible appearance at Royal Rumble in the Royal Rumble match. His betting odds right now are top three, with Shinsuke Nakamura being the top, the second is Roman Reigns, and the third is Daniel Bryan. Obviously, take betting sites with a grain of salt, but this is across the board. It isn't just at one site. It's at multiple sites, and it's constantly in news outlets as well. So, I I really hope this is true. Then we can finally get a Daniel Bryan Royal Rumble moment that we were supposed to get, but we got snuffed out of like four or five years ago. Um, so now that that's all the news, we get to the disappointment of the week, Raw 25. So, it starts off... Uh, what's up? Um... Uh, I I don't have a lot to say about Raw twenty five. I'll I'll I really not gonna talk in the segment at all. But all I gotta say is, McDonald's mo- I mean uh, Stone Cold's moment, great. APA moments, great. Um, the, the the DX moment, great. Everything else I could give two shits about. Didn't care. Was stupid. So just to run, I'm gonna quickly run down what happened because trust me, I don't care either. There's a couple of things that I cared about, um, but that's that ends at a co- literally a couple. Um, the first thing that happened tonight was a whole McMahon family thing where they get a McMahon plaque. There's a whole they, they're talking about oh we we set up a GoFundMe where people donated to get you this plaque, and Vince healed it up as all heals the aspire to be it, it, it was a beautiful thing to see um mr mcmahon just be an absolute asshole to everybody it, it's just a delight and then we get stone cold steve Austin come out drinking uh beer with the mcmahons and then giving shane a stunner and then vince a stunner and then shane another stunner and walks away it's fantastic oh by the um, way I'm pretty sure Vince got hit in the head by one of the beer cans that Stone Cold missed. That's fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. Maybe, maybe that's why he, he decided to announce XFL. Knock some sense into him. Um, first match of the night, which there there was almost like no matches of the night. The only match I cared about was the IC title match. Because that was an actual good it was, was, actually was that really tonight? Good match. Was that well, the same night? That was, the, that was the IC Monday title Wednesday. match, Reigns vs. Miz. I forgot that was Monday. It was a good match, dude. Um, The first match tonight was a women's tag match of Asuka, Bailey, Sasha Banks, Mickey James versus The Thickness, Nia Jax, Alicia Fox, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose, which both of them were accompanied by Paige. Uh, rest in peace, Paige's wrestling career. Um, Asuka... Ended up getting the win uh, for her team. And then she decided, while they were all celebrating in the middle of the ring, that she takes out all three of them and establishes that. It basically hinting that she's going to win the Royal Rumble. Which, eh, good. At best. Um, The next thing, um, the big thing really, was uh, Undertaker cut a promo in the Manhattan Center. Um, and... I, I really want to say I feel so bad for the people that paid tickets to the Manhattan Center and got a half ass show. Uh, some people paid anywhere from like $60 to like $600 for that small venue. I I am so, 
so mad. I would be so mad if I was them. They they spent their hard earned money watching a television screen. It, it it technically you can argue both ways too at the Barclays Center, but it was just it was done so poorly, and uh, I'm getting off track. But the Undertaker he made a promo, um, essentially talking about his legacy, talking about the whole legacy of Raw Twenty Five, and he's saying um, of all the people that he's buried over the years that they should stay buried and which it kind of left the speculation of well is Undertaker can, is this going to be Undertaker's last Wrestlemania or is he retired currently it's still looking like um, Undertaker versus Cena can happen at uh, uh, it's going to be Cena versus Elias dude what it's Cena versus Elias no, no, that's for Royal Rumble and probably like Fastlane. They they probably just gonna make a make a announcement right after uh, Fastlane. Remember um the rivalry with Triple H and uh, Undertaker that didn't start till like late February. So this isn't exactly um like it, it's kind of formula for Undertaker is he announced his match late um later in the year i guess technically earlier uh, yeah still later um because even his announcement with shane mcmahon that didn't happen till maybe mid-february so it this is this is just kind of tradition for him um the only thing that I guess in recent years that happened recently was, um, or like almost immediately, was Undertaker and uh, Reigns. But even that, that I re- choose to forget about that. But speaking of Reigns, we get into the um, next match of the night of literally like me f- four matches of the whole night. Um, Reigns versus Miz for the IC title. Um, very, very good match, actually. Um, tons of interference with the Miz Taraj and Reigns trying to juggle between three different people. Um, the match ended with Miz sidestepping a spear and Reigns hit his head on an exposed turnbuckle, but in no way was the camera ever pointed to the exposed turnbuckle. You never saw anyone from the, um, Miz Taraj take it out. Miz never took it off. So, that... I feel I want to blame Kevin Dunn on that really poor camera work, but all right, um, I'll I'll let it slide. But Miz hits Skull Crush. Now gets the one, two, three, and we got Miz as IC champion as rightfully it should. And I'm hoping that God Reigns does not win the Royal Rumble. Um, but next segment we got, which was uh, the Peep Show, run by Christian, which I. I definitely have a love for this, um, just because Christian's Peep Show was one of my favorite segments um, watching growing up, and having like Rollins and Jordan on there, it was it, it was eh, and then the bar got involved, and then the whole brawl ensued, and then eventually uh, Rollins hit Jordan by accident or whatever, so now there's kind of like a weird like disconnects and questions leading into the Royal Rumble. Um, whatever. And we get to the most disappointing match of the night. Woken Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt it ended in 3 minutes and 30 seconds. With Matt Hardy losing clean. <sighs> Do you want to rant about this conscious or should I? I have nothing to say about this night. I hate it. I hate it. Okay. Why the ever-loving hell? Do you decide... To be like, oh yeah, we're gonna build up um, Woken Matt Hardy to be something of importance and have like this rivalry actually make sense and be something good. And no, we're just gonna completely cuck the people that uh, paid sixty to six hundred dollars um, to actually see this match. Cool. Uh, fuck WWE. That that's that's the only thing I can say about this. Fuck them. Um, next we got the females of WWE's past. It Tor- Tori Wilson, I think, was there. Um, 
Trish Stratus, Kelly Kelly, um, and then Jerry Lawler made a really sexist comment um, that I'm not surprised he doesn't commentate anymore. And, yeah, uh, it's same old uh, era. And let's see. Elias and Cena had a promo, essentially, essentially hinting that originally it was supposed to be Elias and Samoa Joe. And then since Samoa Joe's hurt, so now we got Elias and Cena. No, it was supposed to be Samoa Joe and Cena originally. Uh, yeah, but even then... Yeah. But I would that like that a lot better, Joe versus Cena. You're like Elias and Cena better than Joe versus Cena? No, no, I would like Joe versus Cena better. They were building that because... The promo Joe had cut before the Rumble was like, oh, I'm gonna, the first person I'm going to eliminate is John Cena. And after that, Cena was supposed to come and cut a promo on Joe. And there's start a few. The need of them were really just, that's what was supposed to be like the big match. I, 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 I still, I, I'm still hopeful that maybe W will pull the plug early on the feud um, and give it at least WrestleMania, the match we want of Undertaker versus uh, Cena, I that that's all I can really hope for. But uh, unless they want to give us Strowman versus Undertaker, <laughs> oh God, please no. But the thing is, but no, I don't want that match at all because I want I would want Strowman to win. To I, be I was I was joking. I was you know I was joking. Because immediately, as I said it, I'm like, oh, God, please don't do this. I don't want it. Um, but the next match tonight, we got um, Big Titties O'Neal on Nickelodeon in Apollo Crews versus Slater and Rhino. Match ended to a no contest, and then the Dudleys came out and put Heat Slater through a table. And Rhino pushed Heat Slater into the ring and watched his partner get power button. Uh, no, it was a 3D. A 3D through the table. Oh, I'm I... mad about that. I'm I am upset by that for the reason you don't for, for a reason that you will be surprised. I'm mad about. I mean, we'll probably agree on it depending on what it is. What? what, what why do you think I'm mad about it? Because Heath Slayer's got kids. No, no, no. I'm mad because I got no clothesline from hell at all that night. Okay, listen, Heat Slayer's the best seller of that move of all time. No, that's what I'm saying. I want to see JBL take off somebody's head. I wanted it. Legit, I didn't like, get it. I haven't seen someone sell a clothesline so good as Heat. The, as only, the only person, the only two people I've seen sell it better is Rey Mysterio and Evan Bourne. To be fair, like Evan Bourne, literally, he just jumps two feet in the air and he can do like five corkscrews. It makes no sense. Um,. But yeah, I mean, we got to see Dudley's, yay! And after that, they cut to the final segment for um, a, like the final part of uh the Manhattan broadcast, which is a DX reunion. And uh, as they're introducing people out, they get Triple H and Shawn Michaels, and then they decide to uh try to bring out um Razor Ramon after about. Maybe what? Not even thirty seconds to a minute of um the entrance music. They they cut to commercial. Do not cut that on the on the on the razor alone. You there you can't more. you can't do that to the man, uh, the bad guy. The uh, you can't do it to Razor Ramon. Because that is not too sweet. That that is not even one sweet. That's literally just no. But DX reunion, I I thought it was pretty pretty awesome. Balor Club came out, too sweeted with them. I I had no complaints. I thought it was pretty pretty cool. I'd say too sweet. Um, and then the final match for Manhattan Center was Gallows and Anderson versus Revival, with Gallows and Anderson going over with the Magic Killer, and then the post match beatdown happened where DX performed all of their finishers. And then Gallus and Anderson um, performed theirs. And then we get a coup de grace from Finn Balor and the Manhattan Center. Uh, Finn Balor. Yo, listen, don't you be dissing my boy Finn Balor. I really love Finn Balor. 
Alfin Balor. Alfin Balor. I I swear to God, the way you pronounce his name, I want to beat your ass. What's the problem with pronouncing his name Finn Balor? Fuck you. It, it it that should not be how it's pronounced. I like Finn Balor. Fuck you. It's Balor. It's Balor. I swear. I swear to God, me and my Irish ancestors need to fucking curb stomp you. Um, so the final segment of the night, which really I don't give two shits about, is Lesnar, Kane, and Strowman. Just a whole beatdown of Kane kind of just looking weak. Uh, Lesnar ma handles Kane, and then Strowman puts Lesnar through a announce table. And yeah, that's that. that was it. Besides, the whole locker room was also ringside so yeah raw trash moving on to smackdown um matt the night kind of started with a um a sammy and kevin owens promo with like aj styles jumping in it it which set up um eventually two matches for the night which was kevin owens versus aj styles immediately following is Sami Zayn versus AJ Styles. So it's almost a gauntlet match for AJ Styles. Uh-huh. Um, and, yeah, so we get to the first match tonight is Chad Gable versus Jey Uso. Which, which one was the DWI one now? Was it Jimmy or Jay? It was Jay. Uh, they're losing their titles on Sunday. Maybe. I, I was happy. Uh, I I will admit, I love uh, Chad Gable's suplexes and his Yo, cast. He, his freaking rolling German is beautiful. Um, but yeah, he won with the rolling German. Uh, and we got to the next match, which I literally don't care about. I I couldn't get paid to care about. Naomi versus Liv Morgan. Naomi wins. I I gave zero shits about that. We already know none of those women are winning. <laughs> they don't have a chance of winning. Yo, did you know Donald Trump has a um a thousand to one chance to win the Royal Rumble? Oh. Uh, Zack Ryder has two hundred to one. <laughs> and Kenny Omega has a sixty six to one chance. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why focus do these people Fo focus. Exist? I can't. I can't. Um, so next we get Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke Nakamura. It was actually a good match. It was probably the best match they've had ever between the, the two. The, 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 let's talk about the real best moment of the night. Are you talking about Rusev Day? No, we're talking about Randy Orton's RKO out of oh, yeah, yeah. nowhere in the Shinsuke. Shinsuke. So I want to give credit on the camera work. That was absolutely flawless. Where Randy Orton perfectly came in out of frame and just RKO. Yep. That, that was perfect coordination between Randy Orton and the camera crew. I I think it's more on camera crew than Randy Orton though. That that was just fantastic. I, I I'm really hoping Randy Orton doesn't win Royal Rumble, because if he does, uh I might actually kill myself. Um so next we got Bobby Roode and the New Day versus uh the unhindered Jinder Mahal and Rusev Day. Yeah. It was alright. Yeah. We 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 got the the faces went over. And then we get to the final two matches of the night, which really I, I want to argue is literally a ma one match. Um which Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles ended in a minute and a half. By the calf crusher, Owens tapped out in because Kevin Owens is injured. Uh huh. And next we get Sami Zayn versus AJ Styles. Oh, one key thing I forgot to mention was if they tried to interview interfere in each other's matches, they would have been fired by Shane McMahon. So that was actually kind of a key thing in there. Um, but then last match of the night. Uh, it finally brought to uh, Sami Zayn versus AJ Styles, and that match was actually long. And then some weird, stupid finish where AJ Styles is just being made to look 
kind of idiotic, honestly. Um, I think he tripped over a gurney or something that Kevin Owens was on. And then he comes into the ring, eats a haluva kick, and then get, eats a uh, blue thunder bomb and is pinned. Yeah, Sami Zayn won the match with a blue thunder bomb. Excuse me. What? the 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 end is nigh. the 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 end is nigh. All right. Oh. Um, we get brought to the mix match challenge, which is Miz and Asuka versus Carmel and Big E. Um, it was actually really good. Some people were not like was, the crowd wasn't. What's up? I was like, it was okay. It wasn't. It, it wasn't terrible. Well. Um, it wasn't probably as good as last week's, honestly. Um, and definitely yeah. the crowd wasn't into it, but I like the pairing of Miz and Asuka. Miz and Asuka ended up winning, and I, I, I just like them being paired together. It's, it's actually hilarious. So now we get into 205 Live, and this is actually really important. Like, this week was actually kind of a good week to watch for once, and I, I seriously mean there's two things that were actually kind of important to watch the the other two things were matches that were meh at best um so daniel bryan uh is announcing that with uh enzo mora he abdicated his um championship and he's no longer part of 205 live which means now the uh crusade championship is kind of in a limbo and it's going to be decided it's um, state by a general manager that will be announced next week. And for who I was about to say, who I think is going to be the general manager is Rockstar Spud. Yep, that's who I told V-Sig about too. The Rockstar Spud is my bet to be I'm, I'm, ba I'm banking on it. I'm taking my money to the bank on that. There's, th there's no other logic, logical person for that job than him. And he can be such a great heel authority figure. Someone who's just small and slimy. It's great. I. Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. No, e EC3 is not 205. I would have been like, yo, yeah, EC3 yeah. for 205 Live? <laughs> That'd be wild. Um, So that was really important. Like, probably the most important thing besides the final match of the night. Um... But first match tonight, we had Kalisto, Grand Matalik, and Lince Dorado versus TJP, Arya Davari, and Tony Nese. And the match was meh at best. I think the faces went over. I can't remember. And I really couldn't be afforded to care. Um, next match we had, which was Jack Gallagher versus Hideo Tommy. And the finish to this was weird because now they have... I feel like they might have banned the GTS. They did because of uh, fucking um, Hideo Tommy uh, injuring somebody. Yeah, what's was got hurt? Um, I think he injured Gallagher or broke uh, Kendrick's nose or something bro like that. Broke Kendrick's nose, yeah. So they banned the GTS, which I pisses me the fuck off. It because you can't you should ban the move. It should be Hideo's not doing it properly. Um, Cause cause, how many people did did um? Did, uh... CM Punk injured none. Maybe one actually. Exactly. He might have injured one person by an accidental botch on the other, per like the other person botched the landing. It wasn't even Punk. Because the way Punk does yep. it, they, they they both do the GTS di differently on the strike, where CM Punk hits on the upper thigh to make it look like it's hitting the knee, but it's a softer impact. Hideo uses the knee. And that's the problem. If Hideo uh -huh. modified his GTS, not to where now he's using this modified GTS, which is really just a eat defeat, but with a knee. It's it's stupid. It's really the stupid. Punk, CM Punk hits it above the knee, like the thigh Yeah, that's area. what I'm saying, like the upper thigh. Yeah. Literally, Hideo can do that, but no. I, yeah, but Hideo's straight up going for... I'm going... Is going for... He... He's trying, like, I can, I can see him being like, I'm, 
trying to be um, a vicious competitor, but I straight up going for a knee. I know. I I just I'm I'm mad. I'm I'm angry. Um, but the final match of the night, I am not angry over because this was a fantastic match. Like, Probably one of the best two five matches in a long time. Yeah, Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, the crowd got really into that match. They, for once, there was no delete chance. There was no booze. There was nothing but crowd support for this match. And I have to say, if you have the network, please, please watch this match. It it truly shows what these competitors are capable of. Um, it, I... I'm it, it the match left me speechless. It's that good. I it's one of the best matches of the whole week. There's one match on NXT that's probably just above or just equal because it's that quality. And me and Conscious Array know exactly what Conscious Array knows what it is, but um, uh -huh. we'll get into it when we uh, right now actually for NXT. But yeah, two hundred five. Definitely, just definitely watch the final match. If you're not going to watch the whole show, which I don't blame you, just watch the final match. It's fantastic. But anyway, NXT, we get into the um, return of Noe Jose um, facing off against Cesar Bononi with Noe Jose picking up the win. And Noe Jose kind of looks like he has a little bit of rust on him. Um, and he, he definitely looks a little bit out of shape, but... He's been gone for a while, so I don't blame him. Um, but yeah, good match. Nothing really too special. Um, next, we had Bianca Belair versus Latoya. Um, I mean, it was a decent women's match. Bianca Belair is ridiculously strong. I don't understand. Like, for her stature, she's ridiculously strong. I'm a fan of Bianca Belair, but that the nobody they had was weird. I, I did like her. Yo, but like, like her, like the the raw strength of her is ridiculous. Like she doesn't look like she's a bodybuilder, but like she's deadlifting people, and her reverse powerbomb is so nice, so yeah. nice. I mean, it ain't it ain't no stenalizer. It ain't it. Stenalizer is too great. Too bad it's banned. Um. The next segment was uh, Ember Moon versus... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, why say versus? It was Ember Moon and Shayna Baszler kind of exchanging words um, between each other. And Baszler trying to basically establish that she's not just coming for um, the championship. She's going to make a name for herself and be like the most dominant person on the roster. And it was a really well-planned um, promo. Um, it set up... Shayna perfectly for as a dominant heel um in giving Ember Moon a huge challenge for Sunday uh Saturday. Uh -huh. Um and next we had the match of the night which was uh, Johnny Gargano versus Velveteen Dream and Gargano's NXT title shot is on the line. Fantastic match. Absolutely fantastic match. Um, the psychology of the whole match um, was perfect. Uh, with Gargano trying to focus a little bit on um, the elbow of Velveteen Dream. So that way he can't hit the um, Purple Rainmaker uh, elbow. Um, the Purple Rainmaker or the Death Valley Driver, which are his two finishers. I, I feel like the, the Death Valley Driver is more of a setup. For the Purple Rainmaker? Yes. It makes sense as a setup because you have the car wheel Death Valley Driver. As soon as it's down, he can get back up, go to the top rope, and get the Purple Rainmaker. And also the Purple Rainmaker is protected as all hell. Which oh, is fantastic. Sure. Like, he has yet to actually lose a match um, when he hits that move. He's never never lost a match. The only time he loses a match is if he uses the Death Valley Driver. Key thing. 
Um, but yeah, great match, great psychology. Um, Velveteen Dream, it, they he just constantly exceeds my expectations every time. He's something he's, special. Yes, he's a student of the game in. Especially every... for someone who's from Tough Enough, who has a besides, I guess the the current names has had a very bad crop of wrestlers. The only two people that have been successful in WWE from Tough Enough right now are Miz and Velveteen Dream. The only two names. And I, the thing is, like, they both have two completely different stories where no one really even knew about um, Velveteen Dream or Patrick Clark, as he's actually known as. Um, Miz, he was a reality star and then turned professional wrestler. They're two completely different stories, but at the same time, like there's, you can see a lot of parallels between the two when it comes to the whole tough enough and showing how good they are. Um, I, I can't be more proud for um, Velveteen Dream. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited to see him versus Cassius Oh no, about to get into that. Mm -hmm. They, yep. the, these two following two matches were actually just announced um, as we were uh, recording. Uh, we have Cassius Ono versus Velveteen Dream. And I'm completely excited for this. Yep. Two extremely talented workers. Obviously, Ono's not winning. It's, that's obvious. Yep. My hope is, honestly and truthfully, I hope Cassius Ono, they, they do give him a chance on the main, chance on the main roster for one oh, in particular I'm, reason. I'm banking that he's going to... I, I No, I'm not going to bank, but... No, I don't say... think he is, but I would. This is the reason why. Okay. I would like to see him and he, him, Cesaro turn on Sheamus. I want Cesaro and Sheamus to lose. He he turn on Sheamus, have Cash Ono come out and help him, and reunite the the kings of wrestling. Cash oh, Ono and Cesaro. Oh, 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 oh. That's what I w would Please. like to happen. Firstly. Please. The Kings of Wrestling were fantastic. I love their hardening style. I miss them, and I would kill for that as that team again. That that's, I I I would want that so bad. It would also be uh, kind of funny as if like meningitis part two struck again, and to replace Roman Reigns, you got Chris Hero. Oh, you know the original <laughs> Shield member. Yep. Yeah. Um. But honestly, if he goes to, to main roster, chances are we're probably going to see a rivalry between Roman Reigns and Cassius, which I think his debut on the main roster, along with several other names like AOP, um, it's going to be a Royal Rumble. Yeah. I'm I'm have a good feeling on that, so that way they don't have to bank on legends. Because uh. I I really don't want that, and that. It was bad enough when they had the 40-man Royal Rumble one year. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. That was a bad Rumble. Like, I don't think I was ever as bored as I was watching that match. Mm -hmm. Even though I was excited where I was just like, Oh, Santino might actually win. Please. Um... But the final match that was announced was uh, Alistair Black versus Adam Cole, Bebe, in an Extreme Rules match because we're in Philadelphia. And this, I, I honestly think it's going to be a bloodbath. There, there's no other way to put it. Hey, who? What? Oh, between oh, uh, Alistair Black and yeah, you know, Al Alistair Black and Adam Cole. It baby, you cannot baby. say Adam Cole without baby. It's got me baby. Um, mm -hmm. it. I think that match is going to be an utter bloodbath. I'm, I'm honestly thinking that it's either one or both of them are walking away with a crimson mask. Not completely, mm -hmm. but since it is NXT, they they can get away with a little more. I really, I I have a feeling thumbtacks are coming out, but um, I I can't be any more excited about this. Uh, 
actually this whole takeover it's it's going to be amazing Shayna mm-hmm. Baszler and um Ember Moon Andre Cien Almas and Johnny Gargano um wait there's only oh, oh it's also a pain versus uh undisputed era it, mm-hmm. it's a powerful card and since it's nxt it's, it's only what five matches are announced but each match is going to be like about 30 minutes 30 minutes yeah yeah the, five matches are norm which is, that's what i love too. is the fact that they're they're long matches yeah um but that's going to do it this week um in, for this week in WWE, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, um, share with your friends. Want to try to mm-hmm. definitely um, get this going. Um, it definitely helps um, us be a little more, more motivated when more people are watching. Um, yeah. sometimes, not going to lie, there's sometimes where me and him, we're just like, do we want to do it this week in WWE this week? But it, it sometimes mm-hmm. even comes down to like, Maybe maybe this week is actually kind of bad because there literally nothing happened. Mm-hmm. But that's that's us for you. But uh, thank you guys very much for watching. This is Righteous Raku signing out. Mind you guys keep riding the lightning. Ah!